My name is Andrea Zollner and I'm the Chief Content Creator at SiteGround. Great. How long have you been doing that? A little over a year. Really? Yeah. It, is that how long you've been with SiteGround? Yes. Yeah, really? so I was hired to do that. Excellent. So you're writing a lot? I'm, I'm writing a fair amount. Uh, my role is overseeing a lot of the content or seeing how we create our brand messaging. So that could be anything from reviewing tweets and social media content to working with our, our product managers to talk about our content um, and how, you know, talk about our products and talk about how are we supporting our customers and doing all the great things that our products offer. So it can be coming up with blog post ideas just as much as working with our developers on fine tuning some of our UX decisions to make sure that they work really well for the North American market or English speaking market worldwide. Excellent, because SiteGround is based in? In Europe, so we have three offices in Bulgaria and an office in Spain, and we have remote workers in Italy as well, and me in North America. Are you the only North American worker? At the moment, I am. You know. Wow, so that's a lot to represent. It's great, though. I yeah. love bringing my, my know-how and my experience, not just from what I learned you know, in school and through my experience, but just being me and knowing what it's like to live in North America, being able to bring that to SiteGround and to inform our products that way, is, it's a lot of fun. That's great. Yeah. How did you get involved with them? Um, I knew of SiteGround for a few years because I was already in the WordPress community and of course I'd seen them at events and I'd met some of their people. They sponsored WordCamp Montreal a few years in a row. So I was aware of them and I knew that they're a great web hosting company, but beyond that, I, I didn't really know much about them. But I was friends with Francesca Morano, mm -hmm. who is their WordPress ambassador, their SiteGround uh, WordPress community manager and she and I had met a few years before she was doing other projects and then we reconnected in Nashville at WordCamp US and she said Andrea I have so much to catch you up on I just started working for this fantastic company named SiteGround I was like yeah I know them and they're looking for someone just like you so through her you know I got to know them a little bit better we chatted about what they needed and I applied for this position that they had and they offered it to me and so yeah that's how they recruited me wow that's great so you started out working in the wordpress community and just through your connections it brought you to where you're at yeah awesome that's incredible so you mentioned that you're you've been an organizer for wordcamp montreal for a while i was yeah so i just completed my fourth year organizing second year is lead so last year so now i'm stepping down and handing it off to a fresh team that is you know going to be great it'll be the 11th it was the 11th year actually for WordCamp Montreal so long running WordCamp yeah. yeah and it was I, yeah it was fun being or the organizer but i'm ready to hand it off to new people now yeah it's good to have a fresh fresh team and fresh perspective and i'm sure they'll probably ring you up for advice every <laughs> once in a while yeah it's a great community so i'm happy to still be involved a little yeah. bit so. and i met Carl Alexander yeah. and he was an organizer with you. He was, there. yeah. And he was very involved with a lot of the meetups up there as well. Yeah, so he's been an organizer for a lot longer than I have. Okay. He was one of the originals really that kept the community alive and grew it. So we, yeah, we all owe a lot to Carl Alexander. Yeah, he's yeah. a great guy. So yeah. much fun. I got to spend a lot of time with him down in um, at WordCamp Phoenix and then again at uh, Pressnomics. Yeah. And, we're talking about and your Montreal is like the one word camp that I wanted to go to but it's like the same weekend as DEF CON and just ha doesn't happen for me but I know a lot of people all over the world come to Montreal for, yeah. for and you camp. might get lucky next year you know the dates kind of shift <laughs> yeah. around August so who knows you yeah. might be able to come yeah hoping for it so that's yeah. cool um, so now you've been with site ground now and I, I hear yeah. I, you know, in dealing with customers who are using word fonts, SiteGround is like a favorite destination. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, I need to move hosting and, and people move to SiteGround. What makes SiteGround such a great host for, for WordPress users? Right. So I think what's, what sets us apart, you know, a lot of hosting kind of seems the same when you look at it. Um, it's all servers. It's, you know, when you talk about shared hosting, a lot of the packages will end up offering similar items. So a lot of the things that differentiate hosts are the custom technology, 
um, the ease of transferring or getting set up, and the customer support. And so those are three things that we really focus on at SiteGround. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people don't realize that we have over 500 employees, um, and a lot of them are customer support representatives. And that's how we can offer support 24-7, 365, over phone, chat, ticket, in English, Spanish, and Italian. So that is huge. And I think that makes a big difference in the perception people have of us and their experience of us. It's like whenever they encounter any sort of issue, they don't have to be on hold for hours and hours. They can talk to someone right away. And they can also talk to a WordPress expert. So it's not just someone that you know, read the manual once and was put on the phones. You know, the people that we hire go through extensive training. And a lot of them are passionate developers just in and of themselves. Like, yes, they work for SiteGround and they love helping people with their websites. They're also over here tinkering and making their own projects. So you talk to anyone and they're really knowledgeable about WordPress and about hosting. And they've pretty much answered every question that exists. So yeah. already, you know, you're going to talk to someone that's going to pretty much be able to answer any of your questions. Yeah. And then the other thing is our developers work really hard in fine tuning technology uh, that makes your website as fast as possible, as secure as possible. And they're just constantly working on that and fine tuning it and, you know, pushing the boundaries of what's possible. And so that's something else that sets us apart is that like we're constantly innovating and trying out new technology and keeping, you know, um, getting it to a stable point where we can release it for our customers and make their lives easier. And especially people who are making websites for a living, when you're making multiple websites a month, you know, you want to have the smoothest workflow possible and you want to make sure that the sites you're building are going to be safe and secure once you ship them to your clients. Definitely. So is most of the, most of the um, developers in the sites that you're hosting, is it mostly in the WordPress space or do you work with other technologies too? We do Drupal as well. Yeah. Um, but I would say most of it is WordPress and then Drupal is a secondary. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. But we love both and we have a lot of people that we send to the Drupal events and I hear great things. I've never gotten to go personally, I'm more in the WordPress space, but um, yeah, all open source projects I think a lot of people at SiteGround are very passionate about. Yeah. So how did you get involved with WordPress? Right. Um, I was first exposed to WordPress when I was doing my journalism degree. You know, WordPress is kind of the number one, and it, it was back then as well, the number one way for publishers, bloggers to get online and to make something that looked professional and was easy to integrate with different services. So, you know, when you work in journalism, yes, you're publishing things on a page, but you want to tie in a lot of different services. Um, you want to have things connected to RSS feeds. You want to have things connected to um, like Google APIs. And so that WordPress just made sense. And that's how I first got into it. But my sites were very rudimentary and that was fine, you know. And then I, I was pursuing my degree. I graduated and I started working in corporate communications because those were the jobs that were available to me. And, and it allowed me to pay off my student debt really quickly. So I took them. I was like, yeah. I'll work for this insurance company or this pharmaceutical company and and those were great experiences but I really wanted to work in tech. I just kind of had this feeling that I wanted to be more on the cutting edge of what was going on in the world when it came to technology, media, publishing, all of that. And so the web or web technology felt like the right route to go. And I knew someone who worked at Automatic and he had this amazing life where he was jet setting around the world, working on his laptop, pushing code you know, in Iceland or in Malta. And I was like, okay, how do you do this? What's the secret to having, you know, this nomadic lifestyle and still getting a paycheck, you know? So he told me about Automatic and he told me about WordPress, which I'd heard of, but he explained the whole community around WordPress and what it meant to have an open source project and what, you know, meant how all these companies could survive in this ecosystem and how there were jobs for people who weren't developers. And that this was like, okay, there are jobs like for people like me in this space. And he said, yes. And so um, that really encouraged me to sort of take the leap of faith to quit my corporate job and to pursue this route of, you know, communications in the tech space. And through him, I applied for an internship at Automatic and I worked in their VIP team, uh, which is hosting, you know, which is funny enough, kind of came full circle, but the VIP team at Automatic was, was hosting. So I interned with them. And then later on, I was a contractor working on WordPress.com and Jetpack and WooCommerce uh, for a couple of years. So that's sort of how, at that point, I was really in the WordPress community. I 
you know, I got to understand a lot more about how it worked. Got to work on products like Jetpack and, and WordPress.com, which was really cool. And then that's, you know, after that, that's when I went to SiteGround. Interesting. Wow. So you've seen, you've seen WordPress from a lot of different angles. What do you think is the most unique thing about WordPress? The most unique thing about WordPress is probably the community. And um, it's sad to say that a lot of people don't know that. You know, if you're just a WordPress user, it, you know, once you get over understanding, okay, what is, what is WordPress? Why is it free, first of all? People are very skeptical. Like, why is the software free? And then when you explain what open source is and how there's this whole community, and then they wonder, okay, how do people make money in WordPress? And then you explain that. Once they sort of start understanding that, they can tap into the richness of that community. And that's, I think, what's really unique about WordPress as a web technology. Um, and then, you know, from the user perspective, I think it's just the flexibility and the malleability of the platform. Being able to basically make whatever you need it to be. Um, I mean, I, I say this from a naive, non-developer perspective. I'm like, you can do anything with WordPress. Uh, but I, I do feel that it suits most use cases of people that need to build things, you know, just to express themselves online, all the way up to building their business, you know, building a, a business that's going to allow them to support their families. You know, you see all sorts of different projects and WordPress can enable people to do that. And so I think that community and flexibility. Yeah. yeah. Well, 55,000 plugins in a repository, you know. Yeah. <laughs> if you have a business use that you'd like to explore with WordPress, there's probably a way to do something with one of those plugins or a combination thereof. Right. So. And to think that because the community is constantly pushing WordPress and evolving it and, and building off of it, then it's something that's, you know, it's a living thing. I think, you know, uh, the services that are available, the plugins, like you say, that are available, it's just growing and the technology is becoming more sophisticated. So when you build something with WordPress, you're not locking yourself into this one solution. You're participating in a solution that is growing and evolving, and then you can be part of that, which is pretty exciting when you think of it. It is. There's so, you know, we've both been to a lot of different WordCamps and all of these communities are all so unique, but there's so many users that have never been to a WordCamp. Yeah. You know, I think the majority of people haven't yet tapped into the full potential of what their, even their local community can give them. What would be your advice to someone like that who's using WordPress or trying to learn it? Um, what would you tell them to do? Right. Um so WordCamps are a fantastic place to come. I think that's, that's an easy one to say. You, know, you get to meet people uh, who work with WordPress, who are building things with WordPress. There's all sorts of, of, you know, like the community is very diverse. So you'll get to see that firsthand at a WordCamp. But not everyone learns best in that kind of setting. So I think I love encouraging people to attend WordCamp, but I also say, listen, if you come and you feel overwhelmed by the content that you're, that you're you know, viewing or you sit in on a lot of talks where you're not sure you're, you're at the right level or you feel like you're maybe not understanding all of the technical terms, that shouldn't be um, a, a barrier for you to pursue more learning. Uh, you know, and, and um, trying to get, trying to fill in the gaps of what you're missing for WordPress. So I have, as much as I love pe telling people come to WordCamp, you know, even if you're a beginner, I also say, you know, this is a choose your own adventure kind of camp. Uh, come and you don't, don't feel like you have to attend a session every single block. You can take a break, you can talk to people, you can spend most of the time just chatting with people and you'll still get something out of it. And even if you do feel like most of the talks that you've attended are a little bit over your head, don't get discouraged. Um, you know, take notes and see this as a launching point for you to understand the community and understand that there's people behind here who want to help you and there's people behind the products that you're using, so you can always contact them if you have questions. And it's just a way to get connected and to get oriented. It's not necessarily um, supposed to be the place where you get all your questions answered the first time. But I, I love, you know, that, com like introduce people to the community in that in real life way, in person way, is, all, is fantastic. And there's really nothing that substitutes that. Uh, in terms of a starting point. Yeah. But the other thing is, if you're, not, if you're not someone who learns best in that context, there's so much 
there's so many video tutorials. There's so much content online for you to read. Um, like most products that you are using have a content person like me working to communicate the product technicalities better, to onboard you and help you use it in, in a more sustainable way, help you understand how it can apply to your use case. And so everyone, whether they work for the company or just a volunteer, wants you to succeed. And so if you're looking for something online, you're probably going to find it. Yeah, that's true. So what's new at SiteGround? So much. Yeah, we just launched. Uh, we're really excited about this, actually. We just launched a whole new uh, user area for our clients. So we've redesigned the experience of SiteGround for our clients. Um, it's more intuitive. It's more beautiful. And it also just reflects better and helps you to use our tools better. The other thing that we launched at the same time is our new site tools and site collaboration tools. So we uh, have redesigned basically not only the experience for our client area, but the way that you will manage each website. And so Site Tools is our site. Um, so instead of using cPanel, we use something that we designed called Site Tools. And it's an easier- No more cPanel and SiteGround? No more SiteGround? cPanel and SiteGround. Oh my gosh. I know. <laughs> I'm so used to like logging in. When I used to clean hack sites, they'd be like, okay, now what cPanel is this gonna be in? <laughs> So that's gone now? It is. Oh my yeah. gosh. So cPanel was fantastic and it wasn't because it was lacking in anything. Really the idea was that we wanted to have something that was totally customized for the SiteGround customer. So someone who is already using our services and who um, really, really loves the SiteGround experience is going to love Site Tools because it's designed to maximize all of the tools that we've built already. It's really designed for our customers and the way that they use SiteGround as well. So we're constantly listening and asking questions about how our customers use it. And when we deal with people like freelancers and small agencies or big agencies and anyone in between, these are people that wanna have the smoothest workflow possible. They wanna be able to, to spin up websites, spin up staging sites really quickly, use uh, WPCLI really easily. They wanna be able to have Git integration and file manager, all these things that are pretty much, you know, just a given. They want to make that whole flow as seamless as possible. And so we design tools to help them do that. The other thing is we want to help people make money building sites and make more money building sites. Because when you're building a business, all of that matters. And so with our affiliate program, you know, you can ship your site to your clients, recommend the hosting, they sign up and you get the kickback. And that's all done super seamlessly with our new site tools. And if you want to start doing white label hosting, where you buy a package from us and you set your clients up on them uh, and you send them the login information and they can just log in to white label hosting, you can charge them whatever works for your pricing. And that's another way to build in hosting into your service package. So SiteGround makes it easy to do that. And we also have these collaboration tools where if you are a developer on a project, you can invite a designer, a content person, um, another developer, if you have a team going on, you can invite them to collaborate on a site and you each have your own login credentials. And then when you log into your own SiteGround account, you can see all the sites that you're collaborating on and you don't have to remember each client's login information. You don't have to, you know, send them their login information and then share it and then be afraid that they're going to, you know, cause a vulnerability or something. You can have your own account, your own, they have their own login. And all of that is just an easier way to manage multiple websites. And so that's just another way that we're designing tools that are really designed for agencies and freelancers and their realities and their workflows. That's nice. So it really sounds like you're designing hosting for the way people are working and really integrating your hosting platform into workflows that are pretty common across development. Yeah, I think, I mean, SiteGround is great for whether you have one website or whether you are a full stack agency yeah. um, that spins out, you know, hundreds of sites a month. So we kind of can span all of that. But I think what's really interesting is when we listen to our clients who are developers and we hear their feedback and we react and we build things with them in mind, everyone wins because whether the beginner user uses all these features or not, they can work their way up to using them. And as a content creator who's not a developer, I find that super exciting because 
With cPanel, I was able to get around and orient myself, but with Site Tools, I'm actually learning a lot more about what these tools do and their maximum capacity and all the things that I wasn't really utilizing to their, you know, to their full potential. Now I'm seeing in my hosting account all the things that are kind of working without me even touching them, and I'm even more impressed by my own website, and I'm even more empowered to do, to do more with it. Excellent. So I have a question from the security angle. Does this mean that, like, the 30 sites in a cPanel thing can't happen? Is SiteGround now encouraging people to, like, functionally isolate their sites? Yes. So each site um, kind of operates on its own, and it has its own site tools for each. Okay. So, yeah. I, I hear angels singing. <laughs> I've cleaned a lot of sites, so <laughs> I may have PTSD from seeing you know, just because you can put so many add-on domains doesn't mean you should type of thing. So, you know, advice to everyone listening. So that's great. It sounds like you're taking, SiteGround is really taking security into consideration and trying to encourage people to make good decisions with yeah. with the tools too. So we want them to make good decisions and we want the good decisions to be made for them even if they're not aware of them. That's great. <laughs> that's excellent. Awesome. So anything that I haven't asked about that you want to talk about? You know, I'm, I'm really interested to see how, how companies uh, build for the future. Uh, I think that SiteGround, we are really, you know, we, we like to really be in tune and in touch with what's going on in the marketplace. And, and, but at the same time, because we have so many users, a lot of the time we'll make decisions that are forward thinking, but stable, that we can really stand behind them. And, um, and then on the side, we tinker with the latest technology and we also are always exploring the next thing. And so, you know, it's really fun to see in the WordPress space, people who are operating over here and people who are, um, you know, are pushing things in different directions and seeing, you know, where things like static websites are gonna go and where, you know, some of the new caching technology is gonna go. And, um, and I think, you know, coming to WordCamps is a great way to sort of see what the latest thing is that's going on, and being involved in the WordPress community online is a great way to see where all of those trends are going. And then, as a as a content person, I'm always looking to bridge those gaps. Like we have people who are pioneers and who are working on really high tech technology. And then how do I communicate that to the average user? Or when it is available, what does that mean for the average user? Is this gonna change the way that they use WordPress? You know, Gutenberg for now is the default for a lot of people. So new WordPress users are starting their WordPress sites and they're using Gutenberg out of the box. They don't even know the word Gutenberg because that's just the default editor. But that whole transition period, getting people onboarded, getting people excited about it, um, you know, you could see several years ago the direction that WordPress was going on and going in and uh, the kind of technology that was going to become just standard moving forward. So it's seeing those trends in advance and getting ready for them and seeing how all the companies are going to have to either be part of that pioneering or adapt or get their users ready for it. And now I'm just curious, like, what's the next big, big thing? You know, what is it that we need to start getting ready for and start shifting towards and realigning towards to get all of uh, to get all of our technology ready and to get all of our users excited and ready for the next thing in WordPress. It's exciting, isn't it? Because you it's never static. It's always changing and it's always fresh and there's always something new to learn and I think it just kind of that's what keeps me engaged. <laughs> it's pretty exciting. Well, thank you for sitting down with me here at WordCamp uh, Sacramento and um, thanks. We'll uh, We'll see you around at WordCamp US. You'll be yes, there, right? Yes, I will be. I'll be speaking at WordCamp US. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. Me too. So <laughs> we'll probably like hang out and have a good time there. So In the speaker's you. lounge. In the speaker's <laughs> lounge, yes. The super secret speaker's lounge that no, nobody else can get into. <laughs> Thank you Great. so much for talking to me. Yeah, thanks for being here. Yeah.